Okay, so the design of the Axe 2, which was started out being kind of a, a, um, a SR-71 Blackbird clone, it kind of went off the tracks and became something entirely different. I don't know whether to call it uh, the White Bird or call it, I don't know, it's the Axe 2C is what it is. In any case, the, the vehicle, it works. It can take off, it can maneuver around, it can land. Uh, it is a functional aircraft. This sounds almost exactly like what I was saying earlier for the X-1C, X-1 Charlie. Uh, uh, while not recording, I've gone and done a few optimizations to the design. Oh, wait a second. Well, I think I forgot to change. Well, I guess I'll do some of the optimizations and design again. Uh, one thing. We're getting rid of the thermometers. Don't need them. The reason being that I went and I just uh, did another one of those simple config file edits for all the parts. Uh, in, notice, in flying the thing, I noticed that, the again, the wing tips kept on ov overheating before anything else, and also that these landing gear, they, they overheat. So I just added a thermometer module to the actual nav light and landing gear components themselves. So, for exi so if you go to action groups, take a look at it in here. I guess I thought I saved it. Yeah, toggle sensor. This nav light now has a sensor. We want all the sensors to be in here. In the and action group six is what I think I'll use. There we go. And for all three landing gear as well. Hello? 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 Yeah, there we go. Toggle sensor. And that one I already got it. How about this one? Toggle sensor. Good. I thought I saved that already. I guess I didn't. Okay. Well, it's saved now. Alright, so... Uh, Axe 1 Charlie. He couldn't, didn't have quite the thrust that needed to... in order to uh, cruise at 2,000 meters. Hello? Are we launching? Oh, the game's thinking about it. It's taking a while. Um, it probably would have if, if I'd climbed up to higher altitude and then dived back down, but I, uh, I don't know. I was kind of... Yeah, besides, I really I just wanted to design a new vehicle. Okay, so let's uh, jump through all the hoops necessary in order to get this thing working again. Okay, again, Vander and Kerman, welcome back. This is this is your baby. This is this particular airplane. Actually, I guess I don't need this. Get rid of that panel. So Vander and he is he is an experienced X2 Charlie test pilot by this point. Uh, we're here again. We're just going to 2,000 meters. Can I? find out what happens whenever you start moving really fast. Trim back some. Good. And again, my camera is have to fight using some have to fight with the camera. Some of the camera controls are on the joystick, some of them are on the keyboard because my joystick is not working totally correctly. Oh well. Okay, here we go. Throttle back for now. We just want to climb up to the appropriate altitude first. Nice starry night. I'm looking forward to whenever we have actual weather effects working in the game, so we'll have different, you know, different weather. It won't always be this as as nice as the beautiful starry night sky is. It'd be good to have some variety, wouldn't it? Let's ease back in that throttle. Don't want to be cooking things yet. Temperature is already up in the 1300s range. Honestly, do not know how much of this stuff is going. Uh, to be make it into the final videos because I imagine it could it could end up being kind of repetitive and boring. I, I intend my plan is just keep on recording and aimlessly blabbing, running my mouth, in hopes so I'll be recording and talking should something interesting happen, catastrophic or otherwise. Vanderen is very very mellow about the whole deal. He's he's yeah, he's tough. He can take it. He doesn't care if it hit we hit disastrous stuff. Okay, we've finally gone supersonic. We're at Mach 1.009. Temperatures. Okay, there's an overheat warning. Let's throttle back. Yeah, I don't want to play around with this overheat warning too much because some parts of the vehicle may actually be hotter than that. Okay, so, yeah, we just, just got barely over 270 EAS and just over Mach 1. And it started running into problems. Okay. Let's do a turn. Let's go up to 2,500 in repeat. 
Yeah, this thing takes, I don't know if you plot out in the map, it takes, I don't know, like hundreds of kilometers of actual horizontal distance travel to, in order to do a 180 degree turn. Oh, and I'm climbing too high again. What am I thinking? Finally coming up on my 270 mark, which I was aiming for. Roll wings level. And right about 2,500. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, get things settled here. Good. Okay, let's throttle up and see what happens here. EAS 2400 and climbing. Mach 0.96. Gonna wait here for a little bit and wait for our temperatures to stabilize. Find out. I'm betting that if I understand the way this works, if I do, then as we hit that overheating when my my equivalent airspeed hit right around 270 meters per second. If I'm understanding the way this works, then it should happen at about the same EAS no matter what altitude I'm flying. I think that's the way it works. Okay, yeah, there it peaked. It peaked right around 26. Let's go another throttle notch. Here's our temperature spiking as our yeah, we're pushing, we're above, over 3200 degrees, or we're, we never did decide what, what temperature unit those are. And there's the overheat at 273 EAS, and we'll Mach 1.06. Oh, throttle back, throttle back, throttle back. Okay, this time we're actually going to keep heading the same direction. Let's climb to 3000. My understanding is that EAS, equivalent airspeed, is functionally identical to uh, indicated airspeed, which is the, the airspeed that an actual gauge in the cockpit would display for a pilot. It's my understanding. I, I may be just without uh, various instrumentation here. Yeah, okay, so there's our overheating as it shows up when we're approaching, but still we hadn't quite hit 270. Uh, no, we only made it up to like 267 EAS, but still, you can definitely say that getting up in the range above 260 meters per second EAS, you're getting into problems. Let's still continue, how much, oh, hang on, let's turn this on, how much fuel we got? Okay, we've used about a third of the fuel, a little bit more. Uh, let's continue going in this direction, let's climb up to 3500. Interesting phenomenon that as EAS, yeah, as a higher altitude, EAS, for a given uh, equivalent airspeed, you get a higher Mach number. Since Mach is an actual, it is not so much a, a, an absolute measure of speed as it, it's a comparison of, of, of the current, your current airspeed as related to the speed of sound, which is different. Oh, look, EAS is only up there to 260 at this altitude. Look at that idea. And already we're hitting overheating, getting up there for over 4,000 degrees. Oh, isn't that interesting? Okay, let's turn around. Let's do a 180 degree turn as we climb up to 4,000. It's rate right, we're burning fuel. Need to start. We're already halfway through my fuel, so let's start start thinking about getting back to Kerbal Space Center. Oh, 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 I, got, I forgot what I was doing for a second, and I got way too rough on the controls there. This thing pitched back too far. And this bird really needs a very, very gentle hand at all times. Okay, almost around, back around to 90 degrees here. Staying pretty close to the target altitude, so this encourages me that even though I did screw it up earlier, that yes, I am capable of maintaining a given altitude through a turn. Thank you. Okay. 
And throttle up again. Let's find out how hot does it get. It's interesting, I'm just keep on going to the same throttle setting here. Let's not descend too far. Mach 1.13. Which I was reading under my understanding again of the mod and the way it duplicates in real life physics is that the maximum drag of this thing would be seen up to like about Mach 1.2 and things get like easier after that. EAS is approaching 260. The temperature is still climbing. There's Mach 1.2. There's overheating. Yeah, that, and that showed up. The overheat warning over there showed up before I hit 260. So it's looking like as we increase in altitude that your EAS actually needs to be lower as we go. Throttle down. Let's slow this buggy down. Oh, wait a second. I've got tons. Look at this. The discrepancy in fuel here. What's happening with my fuel? Oh, it's taking lots of fuel. It's taking its fuel from my jet tanks, but not from my rocket tanks there. Let's... Um... Let's try something. If I shut off my throttle, let's just shut off these tanks. Can I make it take it out of the... Out of the center... Out of the center tanks? Yes, I can. Okay. Oh, well, I've still got tons of fuel. Yeah, we can, we can still do more. Okay, what's the last altitude we did? 4,000? Let's go up to 4,500. Okay, here we are coming up on 4,500. Let's level off here. Yeah, maintain this altitude. Maintain this altitude and heading, and we'll increase our airspeed again. EAS is still gradually... Yeah, okay, there. Yeah, we hit 253. At 253, we hit some overheating effects. Matter of fact, let's just leave it here for a little bit. Yeah, Mach 1.2. Okay, now let's actually throttle back, like, half a throttle notch here, because that temperature is still... Yeah, let's throttle back more. Starting to get concerned. Throttle back more. Now we start slowing down. Yeah, we pushed past that Mach 1.2. It didn't need so much thrust in order to just maintain speed. Wow, okay. All right, this time, too. Well, let's, let's turn to the north just to kind of shake things up a little bit and climb up to 5,000. Again, yeah, I, I know I already made the comment in the previous video that this, this really it is. It is pure nerd flying. You know, this is, isn't doing rolls and loops and stuff. This really just watching on all the numbers and the gauges and stuff, but damn, it's still cool. Mach 1.2, come on. <laughs> should point out that all, all of my real life aviating experience has been with the Deftlet very, very much, much slower <laughs> aircraft. <laughs> much slower aircraft, so I actually don't know a whole lot about all the supersonic business. It's all kind of theoretical to me. And there's our overheat. Yeah, see, we used to be having to, we wouldn't see the overheat warnings until our EAS was 270. This time we didn't even hit 250. We have those things overheating. And there's the overheat. Wow, okay, you can see, and that temperature is going to continue to increase. You can see on the graph with just like the little half a notch of throttle at this particular altitude and just a few meters per second difference of equivalent airspeed is equal to like a couple of thousand degrees temperature difference. Isn't that just nuts? Okay, let's throttle it back. Let's climb. Let's go to 6,000. How are we doing in fuel? Yeah, we're okay. So I bet you we'll start again. We'll start seeing overheat effects probably a little bit before we hit 240 meters per second EAS. Maybe I'll just start calling it airspeed. If I just say airspeed from now on, you know I'm talking about equivalent airspeed. Okay, yeah, there, Mach 1.4. 
Temperature spiking very steep. I'm actually going to throttle back preemptively. Throttle, take it two notches down. Okay, there's our airspeed is dropping. Mach number staying relatively. Pull it back another little bit of a half a notch of throttle. Come on, guys. I don't like that temperature. Okay, temperatures peaked and are dropping. Uh, they're kind of plateauing. It looks like our max temperature was like 4,500 something. Yeah. Mach 1.4 and EAS around the range of 240, not quite 240. Mach 1.38 and dropping. Okay. Uh, okay, fuel wise, and since we're coming right up on Kerbal Space Center, yeah, let's go for gentle descent. Try not, try not to pick up too much airspeed in the descent. And go for a landing and relaunch. Okay, so what was that? That was 6,000. I like this whole, I like this flight test business. This is kind of fun. I think I'm, I'm, I originally, I think I made a couple of rude comments to Vanderin about, about him being too mellow, but I think I'm, I'm warming to him. He's, he's got a fairly professional demeanor about him, you know? He's, he appears very stable, stolid, stayed, all those other good words. So just extrapolating from the data I'm seeing already, as we, if we go higher, and I already, yeah, it looks like a, a functioning space plane that'll be able to re-enter and survive the re-entry heat will need to be able to maintain a given altitude to glide and, and shed airspeed uh, at fairly low equivalent airspeed. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that we are definitely going for the larger, thinner wings. It's, it's, it'll look... Our, space, uh, our successful space planes will most likely look not so much like these fighters, you know, all short, stubby, blunt, blunt wing designs, but more like gliders, long, thin wings. At least that, that appears to be where the, the data is leading at this point. Keeping an eye on the airspeed. I don't want to let it drop down below, say, like 150 or so until I'm already set up for landing. Again, I don't care about landing on the runway. I just want to land in the general area of, of Kerbal Space Center. I know that makes some people crazy. <laughs> okay, your speed right, dropping a little bit too soon, too fast there. Okay, let's get that nose pitched up above. It'd be a mistake to do t dramatic pitch change at this point, though. Yeah, airspeed dropping below 150. Whoops, oh, I had a little bit of a slip there. Come on, we can set down. We can set down. There, good. Brakes! We're coming up on the beach here in a hurry. Brakes, 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 brakes. That's right, I was thinking about adding parachutes to this thing, but I never did. A breaking parachute. It looks like maybe we don't need it. Okay, that was all around a successful flight. What we, what, so what was our max altitude we went to? Something like 6,000. There we go. End of flight. Yes, went to end of flight. Yeah, highest speed, highest ground distance, highest altitude, 6,000. Yep. What is this? I didn't even notice. Wow, we did have something explode. Okay. Now that's interesting. I didn't even notice that anything exploded. I wonder which struts... Okay, so two struts exploded due to overheating. And I went through and all, all the struts which I have on here should have the same temperature limits of 5,000 Kerbal, Kerbal temperature units. It's probably not degrees Celsius. That would be ridiculous. Maybe Kelvin-ish? I don't know. Maybe it's these up here. But then also could be these down here. Or these down here. I'll have to watch for that and find out which ones it was next time, huh? 